another war picture. Let's go back to the quiet and peaceful days before the war. So this is peace. So these are the tranquil days of 1939. Yes, for this is the age of speed and noise so much like war you hardly notice the difference. This is the day of athletic sports of all kinds. This is the day of devotion to the graceful art of dancing. This is the day of the worship of the beautiful wide open spaces. And of giving thanks for all the blessings of the green and lovely countryside. This is 1939. No, this isn't what we want either. Although it's very pleasant. Let's go back further still to Grandmama's day. Don't you think it was so much nicer? So much more stately and dignified. Lazy days and gentle evenings undisturbed by any harsh note of reality. Many brave hearts are asleep in the deep. So beware. Yes, these were the days. Grandmama knew that her place was in the home, although Grandpapa could go in for a stern life of dangerous sport. Women were women, and they didn't forget it, even if men forgot it. And when they had finished their embroidery and needed a thrill of excitement, they could always unpick it and start again, while their menfolk roved abroad, a wheel, a wheel. And you needn't think they never had their moments. A young man was more or less expected to sow his wild oats, always providing that there was no harvest. But young ladies knew nothing of all that. They lived in a world apart until the day of true romance, the never-to-be-forgotten moment in a young girl's life. So different from modern times. Before the days of petrol rationing, you moderns looked upon the motor car as the most useful invention. It's hard to believe that the biggest thrill a Victorian girl got out of a carriage was this. You can't get into much trouble doing that. Very little remains undiscovered about the modern girl. You can see she is beautiful. You know she is no fool. But there used to be a song, be good sweet maid and let who will be clever. But she was clever enough to be good. And the result, you must admit, was elegant and charming. If she seemed at times a little shy, it was because where the dashing stronger sex were concerned, she had to be so modest. She is gowned for the theatre. And I wonder what it would be like, that play she was going to see. Would it be dull and stuffy? Or would she hide her blushes in the programme? They say it's very modern and terribly daring. Mm-hmm. Perhaps we're going to find out just why they were called the Naughty Nineties. I don't think he would know. 
Nor would she. Nor she. No, I'm sure she wouldn't. But he might. You see, he's a duke. And if you were a duke in the 90s, you could do almost anything. Handsome! A cab would stop for you without even considering that you could scarcely pay the fare. Bristol House. To Bristol House. Historic townhouse of successive generations of the Dukes of Bristol, where many a lovely Duchess of Bristol had been at home for all the brilliant functions of the London season, attended by kings and princesses, by the cultured, the famous and the aristocratic, and even occasionally by her husband. But George is a bachelor, and very hard up, and so this ninth Duke of Bristol... Tenth. And so this tenth Duke of Bristol finds himself in the unusual position of having accepted an invitation to a ball at his own house. Most remarkable. Tell me, Your Grace, how did you lose your money? Women. Yes, I know, I mean your big money. Big women. A gay and charming scene. But who is rich enough to be able to rent this great house from a duke in need of money, complete with his incomparable butler parks and a devoted staff of servants? Only someone exceedingly wealthy. But could anyone so wealthy be also young and beautiful? Surely only an American. Well, here you would say would be a bride for George who would satisfy all his trustees' requirements. And indeed, most of George's also. But only in his dreams, lying in bed in the morning, can George contemplate the idea of marriage. In his waking hours, the thought fills him with horror. He scarcely sees her. Good evening, George. How nice of you to come. Not at all, Helen. Not at all. All this wealth and gaiety after that would taste more acid than the pickles from which Helen's father built his fortune. As it does, indeed, to Richard Halton, who hasn't the advantage of wealth to sweeten the taste. Being a friend of George is burden enough for any man to bear. And for a man of the very highest breeding and the very lowest income, life is one long attempt to accomplish the impossible. Damn it, sir, that's not crooked. Yeah. <laughs> Poor George, it must be very sad, coming back to your own house as a guest. Better return as a guest than remain as a host to a broker's man. There's nothing for it, George. We must make some money. Try to figure I'm a duke, Richard, and talk sense. But help. We'll drink to the woman I love. Don't be disgusting. Look, here she comes. The one on the left. Do you mean to tell me that you love Mariah Wislak? Have you no respect for age? George, we must join them. Well, here we are again. Somehow I'm able to control my excitement. Splendid. Shall I get you some fruit cup? Or perhaps our dear, revered old friend, Mrs. Wislak, will lend us her slipper. I'm not your dear, revered, or old friend, and I'll thank Naughty, you. naughty, that's the third time you've spoken harshly to me tonight. Don't do that. You know how I dislike it. If you had a little more brain, you'd be in an asylum. <laughs> Richard has either enjoyed your joke immensely or has eaten something indigestible. One of these days I shall write to the Times on present day manners. That should be highly interesting. I think it will cause a sensation. That you can write a letter at all should cause a great sensation. I forgive you, Mariah. Old friends are old friends. George, if you use the word old to me again, I shall throw something at you. Very well, Mariah, but when I reached the age of 41, I was not ashamed. My sister will be 41 in August, isn't it? You beast! Founder! Am I a bounder, Helen? I don't think so, George. Not really. No, I don't think so either. Good evening, Helen. Good evening, Angela. Good evening, George. Good evening, Angela. I didn't know you knew her. Oh, yes, we have a sneering acquaintance. Really? She's also strongly fancied by my trustees. Oh, Helen. Richard, is Mariah very upset? Oh, terribly. I couldn't do anything with her. Would you go to her? Of course. Excuse me, George. Hey. I suppose it amuses you to have made a woman cry? I said nothing that could possibly make her cry. Didn't you, in a sneering way, accuse her of being 41? I did, but she's not crying because I said she's 41. 
she's crying because she is 41. Well, if you must know, I'm the same age as his sister. That damn woman can't keep her mouth shut about anything. Oh, how I dislike him. I'm sorry, because I like him so much. Yes, but you wouldn't marry him. How far is it in the hansom from here to St. George's, Hanover Square? In 20 minutes, why? If he asked me to marry him tonight, I'd run it in five. Oh, but if he did marry, you'd only be for your money. Well, why not? Plenty of women have lived with him for his. Oh. I've loved her for more years than I care to remember. Do you mean to tell me that you've loved that old... Silence! You were about to call her by a name that would have prevented me ever speaking to you again. Have a drink. Or have you had too many? I will have a drink, and I've not had too many. Richard, old boy, I love you as a brother, but I must say I would rather see you dead. Uh, George, Excuse I me. warn you. If you say another word against Mrs. Wislack, our friendship is at an end. Well, very well. But you can't stop me wishing you were dead. Are you addressing me, sir? I see your point. You'd never marry again? Not even if you loved someone terribly? Well, I should require to know a great deal more about my next. Well, how can you until you marry him? I should take him away with me for a month alone. Take him away? On approval. Take a man away with... But, Mariah, how can you think of such a thing? Oh, Helen, I thought you Americans were unconventional. Well, I don't think we go as far as that. No? Well, our men are different. Perhaps Englishmen are less amorous, less uh, enterprising. <laughs> I shouldn't rely too much on that. Did you know her late husband, Arthur Wislack? Did I know him? Did I watch him with murder in my heart, treating that divine creature with cruelty, neglect, and eventually die of drink? He hated drink. Then why did he? He chose it as the most agreeable way of being unconscious while waiting his release. George, I warn you, if you said another Richard, word... old boy, if I have in any way hurt your feelings, I apologize. Have a cigar. Now I know your apology, sincere. Is it yours? Certainly not. It was provided by our hostess. But, Mariah, is it fair to expose a man to such temptation? Suppose his love for you overcame him and he should attempt to... Uh, I should, of course, take a revolver. Yes, but suppose you came to care for him. Then my aim might not be so accurate. But what is more important? Have you asked her if she loves you? How can I? My income is 300 a year. Hers is 25,000. Oh, now I take everything back. You have given me a reason why you are right to love her. You're suggesting that I love her for the money? I'm suggesting it's a reason you should. What do you think you could learn about a man in a month? As much as I wish. But Mariah, the scandal. Oh, I should choose someone less inclined to gossip than most men. Mariah, I believe you've got someone in mind. Well, as a matter of fact, there is a man in your party tonight who within a month might surprise me. There's nothing for it, Richard. You must propose to her. I haven't the courage. Ever tried brandy? One day, I sat with a bottle of brandy in front of me and recited to it the language I should use when asking her to be my wife. With the result that when I went into the room, I was unable even to wish her good evening. Ah, bad luck. But Richard, <coughs> do as I say, and I give you my word that a month from tonight, you'll pop into a bed with a cry, Araya, here I am. George, that is an observation which I consider most unsuitable, either here or in the place you suggest. I was speaking metaphorically. I trust, sir. You must have courage, Richard. Think what marriage to Mariah means to you. Someone to be with, to talk to, no money cares, no cares of any kind. It's not for me. Think of the little ones prattling up and down the room. No, no, I take that back. Why? Very well, if you insist. My dear George, married life to me without children is... Are you laughing, George? No, no, I've got a cold coming up. It's the sort of thing you would laugh at. One other little thing. Please be polite to Mariah. Mm, that's not a little thing, but I will help you, Richard. I'll even warm Mariah up for you to make your proposal. Cigars in the drawing room will not impress Mariah favorably. Number 16, then, after the Lancers. Charmed, I'm sure. Thank you. Mariah. Well? Tonight I apparently said something quite unintentionally that hurt your feelings. Oh, well? I'm sorry. Obviously you have been drinking. Why? Otherwise you would never have apologized. I admit I have been drinking. I drank because I was depressed. Richard depressed me. Oh. Richard has been pointing out to me my limitations, but so gently, so understandingly, that I was compelled to listen. Oh. Until tonight, I never knew the real Richard. Dear yeah, Richard. Oh. Have you lost your voice by any chance? No. Why? 
It's unlike you only to be able to say, oh, George. Ah, there you are. Let's all have some supper. You see? Would you mind, Dr. Graham? What's that? May we join you? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. I'm just going when I finish this. Dr. Graham, famous air specialist. A great success, apparently. We were talking of Richard. You were talking of Richard? Of his gentleness, his love of little children. How many has he got? Richard is a bachelor. That has not answered my question. None. How do you know? Well, he's not that kind of a man. I trust not. And it is through Richard that tonight I have a feeling I'd like to get near to nature. To walk on grass to hear the birds sing their simple songs of love. Birds don't sing at night. Perhaps not for you, Mariah. Would it amuse you to accompany me, Helen? I'd love to, George. Oh, how about supper? We are to move to eat. Besides, there's a buffet in the marquee. I had not forgotten that. Just what were you saying to George? I was telling him of the need men have for the affection of a good woman. Go on. I drew a little picture of returning to one's home in the evening. Where'd you been in the afternoon? Oh, oh no, nowhere in particular. I see. Go on. And there, seated at one's dinner table, a divine lady. To whom you would address a few kind words before going out to dine with someone else. Oh, not at all. I should stay and dine with her. That's original. I've never really thanked you for letting me rent this lovely house of yours. I've never really thanked you for uh, renting it. Somehow I hate the thought of leaving it when I go back to America. Somehow so do I. You know, Helen, I am not appreciated. You easily could be. But how? Well, don't you ever want to do anything for anyone? My dear, the most that can be expected from any duke is to think. Well, then, if you feel you're not being appreciated, why don't you marry? Ah, uh, that. I will tell you. Feeling as you do, Richard, I want you never married. Ah. Uh, Meaning? Well, the love of a good woman is not for me. Then why not try one of the others? There's plenty to choose from. Oh, no, you don't understand. There's only one woman, and she's too good, too beautiful, too noble for such as me. Oh, shut up. I'm sorry. How much longer are you going on beating about the bush? Why not come out in the open like a man and say, Mariah, I love you. Will you or won't you be my wife? I had no idea you knew. Go on then, say it, say it. You have a sweet voice, Helen. Thank you, George. But you seldom sing. That is a great accomplishment. You were talking of marriage. Alas, yes. It has no attraction for you? On the contrary, the husbands of no less than three women I've known have threatened me with it. No, I meant some unmarried girl who was fond of you and might make you happy. I've often thought of marriage yes. with distaste. But there is one woman. Yes. The one woman in the world. Beautiful, charming, gracious, intelligent. You'd marry her? Happily. But where is she? Where? Well, indeed. Now tell me, Richard, do you love me? With all my heart, with I all my... I love you, embraces all that. Now then, is your object matrimony or the other thing? I'd give ten years of my life to be your husband. Thank you. But I've no desire that our marriage ceremony should take the form of a burial service. Richard, I should like you to know I'm very fond of you. But I can't believe it. Why should you care for me? You'd be wise not to let me dwell on that. This is too wonderful. Don't get excited. You're getting the best part first. Now, get up and sit down. Now, let's be practical. My income is 25,000 pounds a year. Many congratulations. Thank you. What's yours? Uh, mine. Well, it varies. Sometimes it's up, and then again it's down. Mm -hmm. What is it when it's up? Well, you know, money means so little to me, I really haven't an idea. Where do you bank? Anywhere, I simply don't care. Fortunately, I could provide for both of us in the style to which I'm accustomed. I love you. Thank you. Now, then, what is today? Tuesday. Very well. On Friday, we'll leave on the midday train for Scotland. 
where, to all intents and purposes, we shall spend a month together as married people. But I... Well? You and I spend a month together alone as married people. Yes. You're not serious. I am. But what an extremely good idea. What an intensely good idea. But this is perfectly delightful and the courage of it all. And if at the end of the month I find that we both feel alike, as it were, we will get married. If not, we'll have had a grand time and no harm done. None. Oh, I really must congratulate you. I never remember looking forward to anything so much. And the courage of it. Oh, if there were only more women in the world like you, what a happy world the world would be. Really, George? But I feel Richard needs my protection. Oh, one more thing. Every night you'll hear the clock in the hall strike 11. Oh, now that's original. I really must congratulate you again. Which will be the signal for you to start putting on your coat. With what idea? With the idea of going out. Oh, but I should have had all the exercise I need during the day. Oh, I know, the dog. On the table in the hall, you'll find a lantern, which will enable you to find your way down to the boat so that you can row across to the mainland. Well, why should I want to go to the mainland? That is where you'll be sleeping. Oh, so I don't sleep with, in the house. You do not. Oh, how about wet nights? I should advise you to bring a raincoat. Raincoat? You know, I must say I feel you'd learn a great deal more about me if I were actually in the house the whole time. After all, I hope I'm a gentleman. That I should be able to decide in a month's time. Ah, number 15. Oh, let's sit this one out. Nonsense. I never sit out the lancers. Your arm, Richard. <laughs> Very hot. What do you mean? So you and she go off alone for a month together to see if you'll be all right, married. Hmm? I dislike your phraseology, but the answer is we do. What is George talking about? He's a bad influence, that man. I think they're only chatting. They look quite innocent. Sleep in a hotel on the mainland. You mean you leave her every night? There's one. I'm sorry to disturb you. What is your name? Ori Shoggs. I'm delighted. This is Mr. Richard Holton. Mr. Ori Shoggs. How do you do? Pleased to meet you. Will you guard that for me? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much. Hurry, Richard. Hurry. <laughs> Up, up. Go. Richard, huh? you really think you can convince Mariah that you'll be all right, Mary? I am all right. Of course, you know, you really ought to stay in the house with her. Well, I'll never consent. I wish you wouldn't refer to it again. Oh, very well, but I still can't help wishing you were dead. It's a nice party. Yes, very nice. I forgot to say goodnight to Parks. Who's Parks? My butler. Let my house for the season. Let Parks for the season. George? Yes? Or to go back and say goodnight to him. That's right. Round we go. Yeah. <laughs> Is 
Is Mr. Parks below? Yes, Your Grace. Good. I wish to visit him. We have arrived, Mr. Odd, sir. Thank you. Ooh. That'll be half a crown. Half a crown? Here's the sovereign change. Say good night to your horse for me, will you? Good evening, Pants. Good morning, Your <laughs> Mr. Halton and I would like to take a drink with you. With pleasure. Your room somewhere at the back here, isn't it? Uh, yes, Your Grace. Near the cellar. You'll find Madam has made very few changes, Your Grace. That's very proper. Good evening, Mrs. Daggett. Good evening, Your How Grace. How are you getting on with your new mistress? Well, things are very queer these days. Queer? Hardly any noise. No. Hardly any drinking. No. And hardly oh, any... Oh, I'm surprised. And we get paid regular. That's very queer. You weren't here in my time, were you? No, Your Grace. Billy. You beast. That's very handsome of you, Parks. I know Your Grace's preference. Have another drink? Definitely. Good. Whisper. Soda. Whisper. Soda. We'll drink to Mirage. It's nice of you, George. Yeah, I'll talk. Yeah. Thank you, George. To Mariah. To Mariah? I still can't help wishing you were dead. Good help. This whiskey tastes funny. You have no palate. Taste again. It's McQuilchy's Highland liquor. All right. I apologize. Hey, if you apologize, I'll come to Scotland with you. Oh, no, George. I asked you not to. Give me another drink. Not so strong. All right. Whisper. Soda. Whisper. Soda. Yeah. Thank you, George. Now you've drowned it. I mistrust you, George. Why do you want to come with me? Oh, trustee. Marriage. Bankruptcy. Get away from it all. We'll have to sleep in a hotel. Hotel's full. It isn't. Make it full. Just a minute. You're full. I'm full. But the hotel's not full. What is the name of the hotel? Hmm? Dundrunnock Arms. Kyle of Lockout. What's the name of the hotel? Dan... Eh? Arms. Kyle of Loch Elsh. Eh? Reserve. All. Rooms. Saturday. Family. Eight. You think of a name? Twelve. Oh, yes. Very good. No, no. American name. All hotels impressed by Americans. Silas K. Must be Silas K. Oh, that's very good. Silas K. McQuillis. That reminds me. Give me another drink. Shh, shh. Who says birds don't sing at night? Good morning, Park. Good morning, madam. Lovely party, don't you think? Yes, madam. I thought everything was perfect. They all stayed on and on. Uh, yes, madam. And that's always a good sign, isn't it? Oh, indeed it is, madam. In fact... Uh, yes, Park? Uh, some of them haven't gone yet. Haven't gone yet? Well, where are they? Why are you so nervous? I'm all right, Mara. I'm glad to see you brought your raincoat. Yes, I hope I shan't have to use it, Mara. If you're still cherishing the hope that you're going to stay in the house with me, you're very much mistaken. 
Oh, no, Mariah, I'm only cherishing the hope that it won't rain. Gentlemen, most uncomfortable. Excuse me, sir. I hope we haven't bothered you too much. Not at all, madam. Thank you. Did you remember to bring it? Pleasant holiday to you. I'm afraid we shan't meet till it's over. If then, goodbye. Goodbye. Hurry with the luggage, Richard. I shall expect you in the morning to breakfast at 8.30. You will find the dinghy by the jetty, and you can row yourself across. Yes, Mara. I'm looking forward to our first day together, alone. You haven't any rooms, have you? No. Good. Stop, stop! What's happened? Is anything the matter? The hotel is full. Not a room left. Richard, did you forget to reserve a room for yourself? He did not forget. They received his wire, but too late. McQuilsh has them all. McQuilsh? Silas K. McQuilsh, his wife and six children. I must look in Excuse me. accommodation whatever. With who? Oh, but did you not receive a telegram from this gentleman? Mr. McQuilch? No, no. Richard Holton. He says he sent one. Ah, he did. With who? Have you no odd corner where I could stand up and sleep like a horse? Why, Maria! Oh, Helen. Why, Helen, what on earth are you doing here? Darling, I've been trying to reach you. The McQuilches are over from the States and I'm showing them round. I told Silas he simply had to see your island. Did you receive a wire from Mr. McQuilch? Aye. Unfortunately, your friends, the McQuilches, have taken all the rooms, and the hotel's foo the new. Well, as it happens, that can be fixed. Uh, Silas has had to go to a conference in Glasgow, and the family won't be here for two or three days. I'm the advance guard. Richard and George can have their rooms. Splendid. 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 One of the rooms Mr. McQuilch reserved was for me, and I thought that... Mr. McQuilch reserved no rooms. There were no rooms left for Mr. McQuilch to reserve. We're foo. The new. The new. The new. If you'll excuse me, I'll have my tea. this very carefully. It contains my old friend Mrs. Wislack's favourite toque. Tell me, Mara, which is the late Mr. Wislack? Oh, George, please. Mrs. McCosh, are the rooms ready? You said in your letter it was only you and a guest. Well, that's quite right, but... You said nothing about the two gentlemen. I know. That happened afterwards. Afterwards? Is it your honeymoon you're on? Oh, nonsense. I'm not married. Nobody's married. Go to the kitchen. Now, will you kindly explain? I don't have to explain anything to you, Mrs. McCosh. Please see to the luggage. 
I'll take no part in your plans. You've been here two weeks and you'll do as you're told, or you won't receive a penny. Bring me a bottle of whiskey. Oh, I'll have nothing. No, you won't. Not a penny. Very well. I'll stay. But mind you, I'll be watching and biding my time. Bring me a bottle of whiskey. I'm the one to give orders in this house. The whiskey will be unpacked ah. and locked up in ah. due course. I like your little cottage, Mariah. It's so simple. Oh, thank you, George. I'm glad you like it. Where'd you get the staircase? Arthur picked it up in Venice on the first night of our honeymoon. Picked it up on the first night of your honeymoon? Mm. What a man. Unpack for me, will you? Yes, mistress. Mistress? Not yet. It's a night dress. I hope you'll find your bed comfortable. Eh? Oh, I shan't use that very much. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Can't you get me some whiskey? Ready? No. Don't be a fool, George. All the servants have left. Well, we'll have to manage ourselves. I'll cook. You and Helen, I know, will help. I'm delighted, delighted, Mariah. George, of course, will be utterly useless. On the contrary, Mariah, you'll find I'm incredibly useful. I'm at my best at beds, I welcome washing up, and I'm a dab at dusting. You can leave everything to me. something hasn't. Having spent three weeks practically alone with him, I wonder you can tolerate his miserable selfishness. Well, he's completely unconscious of it. Richard's been a long time gone to the village. Well, it's a long pull there and back. Now, there's the kindest, sweetest man I've ever met. You don't think he's merely giving a good impression? Well, you haven't left much undone to find out if he has any weaknesses, have you, darling? Are you suggesting that I haven't been nice to him? How could I, when he always describes you as an angel? <laughs> he probably knew you'd repeat it to me. Oh, thank heaven you're safe. Why, Helen, did you think something had happened to me? Well, I did, rather. You see, when you went out and I asked you, as there were no servants, to be back at one for lunch, well, naturally, when two o'clock came, I began to think something terrible must have happened. Oh, that's very charming of you, Helen, but I don't in the least mind having lunch late. Is it ready? I'm very hungry. Dinner's been ready for over an hour. Really? I hope it isn't spoilt. I'll get it for you, George, dear. Where I am.
There you are, George, darling. Thank you, Helen. Some bread. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. And some butter? Oh, yes. George. Mariah? In the cellar, there's some champagne, Moselle, Hock. Please let me fetch it for you. Mariah, you know I never drink at lunch. Oh, but I want you to. I want you to let me fetch it for you. If you'll allow me to say so, I find your joke singularly unfunny. Would you like some rice pudding? To say I would like some rice pudding would be both inaccurate and insincere. To say that I'm hungry and will eat some is an entirely different matter. Where's the cream? There is no cream. What, no cream? George. Mariah? Look at me. Does my face express anything to you? No. Do you know what would give me more pleasure than anything in the world? I can't imagine. To rub your nose in the rice pudding. You should try to avoid crudity, Mariah. I'm afraid I haven't put enough milk in it. I agree, but what it lacks in milk, it makes up for in rice. Throw it at him. Throw it at him. I can quite see why you don't keep your servants, Mariah. George, please. Are you suggesting that it's my fault that my servants left me? I'll put it another way. I suggest that one has to like you very much to remain in the same house with you, Mariah, dear. Just one second. Ow! Ow! Exhausted. Oh, thank you, Helen. I'm rather. Where's Mara? In the kitchen. She all right? Well, of course she's all right. That is not true. Richard, my dear fellow, I have some very bad news for you. You mean she's annoyed with me for being so long? Worse than that. Far worse. What? What do you think? She pulled my nose. Why isn't the damn thing bleeding? Why did she pull your nose? I've no idea. Well, it doesn't seem to have improved it. So this is the return I get for coming up here to help you win her, hmm? Now, let me tell you something. I haven't got a chance in the world of winning her. And even if I had, it'd be in spite of you. At least 50 times you've never I don't want to hear any more. I shall go outside and read. Give me my newspaper. I didn't have time to get You mean to say you haven't brought me my time? I have not. Well, of all the selfish devils. Oh, I've forgotten to send Mariah's telegram. Good. Come on, Manchu. Oh, there you are at last, Richard. I hope you remember to send my telegram. I'm terribly sorry. I'm afraid I didn't. Really, it's too bad of you. Do you realize I shall have nothing to read for two or three days? Oh, I know. I can't tell you how sorry I am. But if I'd known you weren't going to set it, I'd have gone myself. I noticed you brought all the things you want. Tell her to go to hell. What did you say? Tell her to go to hell. What? I said you look tired and not at all well. No. <laughs> oh, I'm all right, really, I am. He's quite all right, aren't you? <laughs> yes, of course. Oh, tell me something I can do to make up. Why not give Manchu his little bath? Think you could? Oh, yes, of course. I have a way with animals. They take to me, you know. How you can hope to impress Mariah favorably by ill-treating her little dog, I don't know. I bent down in a friendly way, nothing more, and the little beast bit me. Oh, what's the use? Give me that, Richard. It's lucky for you that I feel particularly good-tempered tonight. Well, what caused that? Drink, food, or money? None of those. I have decided to make Helen a faithful husband. Jolly decent of you. Well, it's the most unusual thing in our family. I agree. Yes, I've been watching Helen carefully, and I've come to the conclusion that she's a fit and proper person to be the Duchess of Bristol. Well, does she think you're a fit and proper person to be the Duke? Tonight, after a simple meal, a glass of wine, I hope, and a cigar. Where do you hide your cigars? 
Well, I only brought 50. Very considerately, I only smoke them when you're not there. You mean devil. As I was saying, tonight, after a simple meal, etc., I shall ask her to become my wife. It's my experience that after a meal, simple or otherwise, you invariably go to sleep. Sleep? On this, my night of romance? Sleep? Ha! <laughs> Peace in this house. I agree. That's very, very interesting. Oh, Maria, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, you frightened me. I was asleep. Really? Oh, you know how one says things when one's half unconscious. The last man I married was frequently in that condition. I found that was the only time he spoke the truth. But you know I didn't mean it. Then why say it? Well, good heavens, woman, I... Uh... Don't call me woman and don't shout at me. I'm not deaf. I'm sorry, Maria. And if you must smoke cigars, which I've told you I hate, Kindly don't drop your ash on the floor. I'll get something and clean it up. Yes, darling. There's another bit there. Why, Richard, what are you doing? Sweeping up George's cigar ash. I'm sorry to have interrupted your after-dinner nap, Richard. Since you're awake now, perhaps you've no objection to my going on practicing. No, of course not, Mara. Thank you. I can't understand. Before I came here, she always gave me the impression that she liked me. It's too bad, Arthur. Oh, what do you suggest I should do? Tell her to go to hell. What? Tell her to go to H-E-double-L. Oh, I couldn't have... Richard, when I'm married, you can live with us. I'll even insist on Helen making you a small allowance. Certainly not. How much? Well, Helen's a very well-to-do girl. Five shillings a week. Why, Helen? What a charming answer to my thoughts. You were thinking of me, George? Indeed, I was. Do you remember this music? Yes, I know it very well. Do you remember where you heard it last? Mm, I've heard it so often, you know. Oh. You don't mind cigars? No, I like them. Ah, that's why you're so delightful, so sympathetic. You always seem to understand. I hope you'll always think so, George, dear. I shall, believe me. Helen, I'm anxious to tell you something that's long been in my mind. Please do. I beg of you not to consider it the impulse of youth. I won't, George, dear. <laughs> Very well. There is only one woman in the world I would ask to be the Duchess of Bristol. That's very interesting. And if you ask me who she is, I will tell you. Who is she, George? You, Helen. I'm very touched and very flattered. And I am very happy. Thank you, Drew. I suppose there's only one woman in this world who would refuse to be the Duchess of Bristol. And if you ask me who she is, I will tell you. Who is she then? Me, George, dear. Do I hear correctly? Your hearing is perfect. You refuse to be the Duchess of Bristol? I do. May I ask why? Only because you happen to be the Duke. Are you insulting me, Helen? Not nearly as much as you've insulted me. What do you mean? You should have only asked me for my money. You should not have included me with it. I emphatically deny that I asked you to be my wife merely on account of your money. No. No, and I'd have you know there are many women who'd be delighted to marry me. I'm sure there are many women who would have loved to have been the Duchess of Bristol. Frankly, I wanted to myself, until I spent three weeks with you here. May I give you a piece of advice, George? Marry Mariah. How dare you? 
For sheer selfishness, you'd both win the cup outright. You mean to tell me that I'm anything like Mariah? If she doesn't get away about everything, she sulks. So do you. If Richard doesn't wait on her hand and foot, I've never has... allowed Richard to wait on me once. Only because you were too busy allowing me to. I thought you liked it. Anyway, yours is a grand position. I envy you. It's something for a profiteer's daughter to have refused a duke. George, many years ago, there was a butcher's shop. An august person passing it one day was not attracted by the meat in the window, but by the butcher's wife. The butcher, with an ambitious eye to a knighthood, encouraged him to pass it frequently. With the result, he became a baronet. Now the butcher's wife was encouraged. She too acquired an ambition. So she left the butcher. With the result, her son was born a duke. So far as I can see, the only difference between our two families is my father only profiteered in pickles. You are divine, George, dear. I hope I shall always know you. What are you laughing at? If ever another girl falls in love with you, marry her the next day. What on earth's the matter with George today? You think we ought to break his door down? I'm getting quite worried about him. I don't think you need be, just because he stays in his room all day. He hasn't even eaten the food I left on a tray for him. That, I admit, is remarkable. You don't suppose he's cut his throat or hanged himself, do you? Nonsense. He would never be so considerate. I'm glad you didn't wait tea for me. The tide was stronger than I thought. The tide? Yes, it was my turn to row over and get the post. Look what you've done, you fool. Oh, it's all right. There's nothing broken. We just need some more milk. You must be tired. I'll get it. Somebody ought to go with him. He's not safe to be left alone. Nonsense. He's all right. Sorry I've been so long. You're quite well, George, old man. I feel terribly well, thank you, Richard. Where's the post? Post? There wasn't any. Pretty, don't you think? Stop! Stop! Stop him, Richard! Why, Mariah, I'm so sorry. I was only playing for you. I thought you liked it. George, I've had enough of this. Uh, this what? This fooling, can't you see? You're frightening Mariah. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mariah. I didn't mean to. I, I'm very sorry. Careful, George, old man, careful. It's my turn to do the washing up. Oh, uh, don't hurry with your tea. I'll go and put the kettle on. All this before he sets fire to the house. behaving like an idiot, frightening us all. I'm showing Helen I'm not a bit like Mariah. What on earth are you talking about? Don't tell me I'm a liar because I'm not. Do you know what she said when I asked her to marry me? No, what? She said I'm an ass, I'm conceited, I'm selfish, I nag. I'm the descendant of a... No, no. i tell you who I am. Or she said I am. I've never been so disappointed in anybody in all my life. Everything would have been all right if your old woman hadn't started this unapproval business. Are you referring to Mrs. Wislack? In the last three weeks, Helen's found out a thousand things about me and she doesn't like one of them. I'm leaving tomorrow in the midday train. Did you love her, George? How can a man harass to death with financial troubles as I am concentrate on love? It's unreasonable, Richard. Anyway, you go and get your old woman to turn you down and see how you like it. Thank you, I've more sense than you have. I'm not risking it. I'm leaving with you. Coward. Not at all. I want to save her the embarrassment of telling me I failed her. Are you better? Are you better? Are you better? 
Henrietta! Oh, please don't shout at me, Mariah. I wish to tell you that your behaviour was perfectly disgraceful. And shall I tell you why my behaviour was perfectly disgraceful? Why? I wish it to be known that I have not one thing in common, nor am I in the least like... George! Mm, very well, Richard, for your sake I won't. But I'm writing to you, Mariah. Your hand is all wet, Richard. Oh, I'm sorry, Mariah. I was about to wash up. Not to make such a noise. But the washing up's to be done, Mariah. Yes, of course it is, and I'm very grateful to you. Richard, I want to tell you something. Oh, that's all right, oh, Mariah. Please, Richard, what I have to say is very embarrassing, and you might realize. I know, and I'm sorry. I brought you here for the purpose of finding out, as you know, that if we married, would there be a chance of us both being happy? Oh, quite Will you I'd please like... be quiet? Sorry. When I left London, I liked you very much. I almost believed you possessed qualities that might endear you to me. I know. But I had no idea how nice you really are. What did you say? Don't interrupt, please. I was going to say, I think you're a thousand times nicer than I ever thought you were. Nicer. Please don't interrupt, it's very irritating. Now, what was I saying? Oh, yes. I have decided not only to marry you, but to prove to you how much I trust you. I'm going to settle 5,000 a year on you for life. Are you pleased? Please. But I'm delighted. And all this time I thought you disliked me. You'll never begin to know how miserable I've been. Oh, but why? Well, you were so intolerant, so horrid to me. Horrid to you? What are you talking about? Oh, now let's straighten this out. You know you tried every way of provoking me to see whether I was bad-tempered or not. I did nothing of the kind. I'd never descend to anything so mean. Mariah, you don't mean to tell me that that was really you all the time? Of course. Is that how you'd be if, if we were married? Naturally. How long did your late husband live with you, Mariah? Eighteen years. Why? What a man. What a constitution. How dare you speak to me like that? If you had the faintest idea how you've been speaking to me during the last three weeks, you'd know how and why I dared. Richard, are you mad? Mariah, dear, double that 5,000, treble that 5,000. Give me every shilling you have in the world, and then the answer would be no. Oh, Richard! Mariah, I shall always love you for having given me the opportunity of finding you out. I would have married you, not knowing. You, you beast! May I remind you, Mariah, there's a great deal more washing up to be done. If you have anything to say to me, kindly address me through a third person. What have you been doing in your room all this evening? Seeking repose. And just now? Seeking alcohol without much success, I may say. George, will you come and talk to me? If you promise not to revile me again. Not tonight, anyway. Helen, once there was a time when I thought you liked me. Liked you? Three weeks ago, I adored you. If you'd asked me to marry you then, and I would have. I adored you so much. And now? I've spent the last three weeks with you, and I think it's been my greatest disappointment. You mean I died on you? The second day. The second day? Well, that's not the experience of other women who have known me. You know, Helen, I'm always being asked out to dinner parties because people find me amusing. A dinner party only lasts two hours. A marriage has been known to last for two years. Yes. Helen, these last three weeks, are they indelibly imprinted on your mind? They are imprinted. Why? I only asked. I suppose it's because I'm a woman and therefore infinitely foolish. But I think I could forget these past three weeks. If you could tell me one thing. Gladly. The color of my eyes? Blue. Good night, George, dear. Tarara, boom, tarara. Come in. Helen, come away from the door. I thought for a moment you were Mariah. Mariah's lying in bed, stunned by the shock you gave her. I find myself curiously unmoved. 
I'm afraid I've given George a bit of a shock, too. Oh, where's he? Poor dear, he's sitting at the bottom of the stairs trying to convince himself he's colorblind. Colorblind? Oh, well, it doesn't matter, Richard. He'll recover. To do any good, I'm afraid he needs at least six months on a desert island. Hmm. Alone with Mariah. Alone with Mariah. Richard, I really came to ask whether you were enjoying it here very much. <laughs> oh, Helen, you know, I'm having a perfectly awful time. Then why go on having a perfectly awful time? Uh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, you are clever, Helen. But of course, and the sooner the better. Then you agree that the island should be deserted? As far as I'm concerned, tomorrow. All right, then. Tomorrow. Good night. I'll see if the coast clear. Richard. Yes? I wonder if you could tell me something. Of course, Helen. What? The colour of my eyes. <laughs> what a funny question. Green, of course. How observant you are. Thank you, Richard. believe they were in the house. Well, how dare they stay here? Well, you can't expect them to wait on a coal railway platform. Why not? <coughs> to think that I brought that brute here to see if I liked him. And he has the audacity to say he doesn't like me. My stomach is cold, my head is hot, my arteries are hardening. Only alcohol will get me on the train. Nonsense. Never again do I raise a finger. Besides, you shouldn't have drunk all the cooking, Sherry. I would not have asked you, Richard were it not for the fact that I meet those extremely unpleasant women. As it is, I shall die standing. I'm not sure which of us is the luckier. I, to have lost a vulgar little man, or you, to have avoided marrying a congenital idiot. Well, George isn't entirely an idiot. I quite agree. What do you want? The rain is now coming through the roof in 15 places. Well, what of it? We have only 14 receptacles. Well? Well, what do you suggest? I suggest that you will find the railway platform far less uncomfortable than my house. Well, Richard and I have talked it over and decided we'd find it exactly the same. Then why not get Richard to mend the roof? I don't think he'd agree. Ever since he told you the truth about yourself, he's so conceited there's no holding him. Is he boasting about that? Rather. Now he's bragging that one day he'll turn you into a decent woman. How dare he? Well, he says it can be done. He's very childish today. Mrs. Wislack, would you give me the key of the alcohol cupboard? I will not. Did you have that brandy and soda, as I told you? She whom you once loved refuses to cough up the key. Give me the key of that cupboard which should never be locked. I'll do nothing of the sort. Give it to me, I tell you. No. Then you place me in the hideous position of having to reveal myself as a man who has always known where it was. You mean to say that all this time you've had access to the liquor without telling me? You had your cigars. And it's only because you're cold that I'm relenting. So. Helen. Yes? Be good enough to get George a small brandy and soda. You better go and get ready. How dare you whisper to my late fiancé? Ah. Oh. You libertine, blowing kisses to a girl young enough to be your daughter. Mrs. Wislack, for me to have been Helen's father, I should have had to have been an enterprising boy of 14. How long? Four minutes in the kitchen. Go down the back stairs. Four minutes. Mrs. Wislack. Araya, I don't want to speak to you, but I must. I don't want to speak to you, and I won't. Stop. You love Richard? Shh, don't shout. Do you love Richard? Yes, you beast. Must you shout the facts of life outside Richard's bedroom? Come to my room. I 
never thought I would willingly enter here. Please be seated. I feel less frightened of you when you're sitting down. What have you got to say? Are you prepared to call a truce for ten minutes? The reason? Love. Five minutes. Very well. In a few hours, Richard and I will have left this house forever. <sighs> Thank heaven. Stop pretending. Well, surely a woman's entitled to some modesty. Not when you're about to lose your loved one. I close my eyes. I see her divine face, her little hands. I am in love. With yourself, perhaps. Shut up. Out. What are you doing? Kindly put down my nightdress. It's a nightdress no longer. It's a flag of truce. Sit down. Now, to continue. I propose to stay here and keep Richard too. Oh. In such moments, damnable as it is, we must forget the word honor. That should be easy for you. All right. I beg your pardon. Granted. Now, I thought of a way to win them back. Oh. But, Raya, I imagine few men have been in love with you. Uh, so I beg your pardon. Granted. Of one thing I am certain, I must never let Helen see my heart is broken. I have a pain here. Wind. I beg your pardon. Granted, but you try me very hard, Mariah. Now, what I suggest is that we shall be so pleasant and friendly and even affectionate to each other that Richard will not dare to leave me here with you. If we show them a united front, we'll lose confidence. Drink to me only with I'll meet you with the luggage in a few minutes. You're quite sure we're doing the right thing? Of course, I'm sure. Oh, very well, then. But don't be too long. That's funny. I thought I heard. I did. The first word from the soul of rise and my dear Charming. What a delightful voice you have. Thank you, George. What did you say, George, just then? Charming, my dear Charming, what a delightful voice you have. Oh, that's what I thought you said. Oh, by the way, Richard, Mariah has persuaded me to stay on. I hope your journey south will not be too lonely. What did you say, George? Oh, pay no attention to that vulgar little man. I'm not a vulgar little man. You look vulgar. You're quite right, George. Ah, bless you, Mariah, bless you. Don't. Uh, don't you think Patty's quite wonderful this season? Personally, I prefer caviar. No, I mean the singer, Adelina. Oh, the Covent Garden woman. Well, Mariah, there are voices and there are voices. That's what I feel about yours. You know, your voice has a certain rare quality, <clears throat> fortunately. Thank you, Mariah. What would you like me to sing? That one about when you were 41. What? 17. Oh. Oh, do you mean this one? That's the fun Richard, instead of standing there gaping, you could be upstairs unpacking my suitcases. All of them? All of them, and put out my pyjamas. Mariah, what is your favorite color? Pink. Put out my pink pyjamas. Pink. Play away, Mariah, but let your music be only for me. I'm just 17, and I've never been to any stately ball. What have you been doing? Putting out George's pink pajamas. Oh. I have opened wide my lattice, letting in the laughing breeze, telling happy stories to the flowers and the trees, telling happy stories to the flowers and the trees. Oh, the spring, oh, the spring, oh, is coming. Oh, the spring, the spring is coming. Tis goodbye to all the... They're coming. 
Let them find us in a more romantic setting. Come. They've both gone. Idiots! Them, stop them. Why don't you do something? Have to bite me to swim out like a dog and bring them both back in my teeth. Bite him, Nancy. Bite him. I warn you. One move from that loathsome creature and I'll hurl her into the water. And I may not stop at her. Him. Come on, Betty. Mariah. Mariah! Well? Do boats ever come near this island? Not for weeks on end. Couldn't we signal to the mainland? But how? We could burn down the house. You try. That means you and I are alone here. Yes, and just think what people will say. They'll say nothing. My reputation will save you from that. Your what? My reputation as a man of taste. Where are you going? What are you going to do? I'm going to my bed. Well, you needn't trouble to lock your door, Mariah. Only the rain will want to come in. Who's that? It's the haggis. I want to go back. So do I. Get out. You. No.
George. How do you do? There's a man in my room. Why? She's not in her bed. You breaking into Mariah's bedroom. What are you doing with Mariah? Oh, what are you doing in George's room? Well, I thought you'd finish with him. Oh, How dare you, you burglar? How dare you? How dare I what? Make love to Mariah. Oh, I'm very fond of Mariah. I'm very fond of you. You're very fond of Take off the Take off the Never leave me. And that's Grandmama. And that's Grandpa. Oh, and that's a picture of your daddy taken on our honeymoon. Honeymoon is when you go away together after you are married. Pardon me, Lady Bristol. Haven't you made a mistake? Oh, I'm not Lady Bristol. And I don't think I made a mistake. You mean you married Richard? That's right. But what happened to George? Whom did he marry in the end? You'd be surprised. Look. You're joking. Believe me, it's no joke. George? Coming, darling. 